This is your local election headquarters. Welcome back to This Week in Louisiana Politics. I'm joined by John Cuvion with JMC Analytics and Polling. And uh, John, we've spoken to you before about this. You have so much data and research on the midterm elections coming up in November. Um, you've been looking at all of the House, rates and, uh, the House races and the Senate races. We're going to focus in on the House races now because we know that um, the Republicans' control of the House uh, is in jeopardy. Or that's what a lot of people are saying. So in your research, first of all, let's go over some of the basics. How many seats in the House would have to flip for Democrats to take control? So you'd have to have a net gain of 23 seats, meaning that Republicans would have to lose at least 23 seats more than you'd have offset by any pickups of Democratic seats. So a net, a net loss of 23 seats for the Republicans is what it would take to change control of the House. Which is interesting, too, and some of your research covers this, that in order to do that, Democrats would also have to hold on to all their seats, and that's not a foregone conclusion. Right. It, it, even in landslide years, you typically have a few seats that flip the other way. There's four in specific I'm looking at the Minnesota and Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple dozen uh, Republican seats are what you would call very close, but you've identified 14 races where the Republicans are actually trailing. What's going on with those races? So what's happening here, these are House seats where using a combination of presidential election voting and publicly released polling, I'm seeing these seats are where the Republicans are substantially behind, substantially being five percentage points or more. And so given that you have that many seats, and by the way, that's only of polling where we know of. There's kind of this underworld, so to speak, of races where there's not been any publicly released polling. So I've actually projected that that 14 or so seats is actually in the low 20s which, with an additional 60 seats that are too close to call. So in other words, you have a very unfavorable electoral situation for the Republicans this year based on information I'm seeing not only from election results and, but polling as well. So they could actually lose control of the House. It's very possible, yes. Yeah. Um, any of the seats in Louisiana uh, in jeopardy for uh, losing the, because I think, what, uh, six Republicans? Five, five, uh, five Republicans, Republicans and a Democrat, yeah, yes. Yeah, a Democrat. Uh, any chance that uh, any of those seats could flip? I'm not expecting any. In fact, what I would fully expect is that all six incumbents, the Democrat and five Republicans, should win their November primaries with no races being forced into a runoff. Just a little background on your research. You have three categories for this research. What are those? So what I'm looking at, from looking at presidential election voting in 2016 for each and every congressional district, I've identified seats that I've classified that are uh, substantially at risk of flipping, those that are moderately at risk of flipping, and those that are minimally at risk of flipping. And it's all based on what the Trump percentage is. So it's not a perfect gauge, but it's a very good theoretical one, given that you have more and more straight ticket voting occurring in America nowadays. So it's just interesting that the, the Democrats would need 23 seats, but you've really only identified 14 races where the Republicans are trailing mm -hmm. and they might lose, uh, you know, it might flip uh, the, the partisan. Uh, lines. So what what else would have to happen for the Democrats? I mean, if they get those 14 seats, they're obviously going to need more. So what would have to happen, keep in mind that the 14 is only looking at the several dozen half House races, rather, where we have identified polling. Mm -hmm. There's also a huge underworld of districts where there's not been any polling. You always have a surprise in a wave election that nobody ever saw coming. So that's number one for things that would have to happen. The other thing, too, that would have to happen would be those toss-up seats flipping to the Democrats, and that's certainly not a foregone conclusion. A lot depends on the strength and weakness of the political tides in that district. Are we seeing a Kavanaugh effect for the Republicans? So what's interesting is I've been watching what's been happening ever since the Brett Kavanaugh uh, confirmation hearings got more controversial. I'm seeing it more solidifying existing partisan leanings, meaning that in Republican-leaning districts, Republicans are more amped up. In the Democratic-leaning districts, the Democrats are much more motivated. The challenge, of course, is the independents, who thus far have not been favorable for Republicans. So in other words, I don't think that the Kavanaugh nomination fracas will really affect things either way, other than to amplify what's already in place right now. 
All right. It's very interesting. We only have a few weeks until the mm -hmm. November election, the midterm elections. In fact, over 180,000 people have early voted as we're speaking, and that's actually for states that have released such numbers. Mm -hmm. I suspect as we're speaking, it's more like 400,000 of early voting. And of course, Louisiana starts in two weeks. And that's like gold for you uh, pollsters, because those are, those are hard numbers. You can actually look at those and tell how people are voting. It, well, not how they're voting, but you can get an idea from looking at where the early votes are coming for, from and or the partisan registration, who's more enthused about voting and who is less enthused. Yeah, interesting. All right, great information. Thank you, John. Pleasure. Stay with us. We'll be right back.